Thank you for the introduction, Nick. Uh, I'm Xue Chang from Indiana University. Uh, it's my great honor to present our work looking from mirror, evaluating LT device security through mobile companion apps. So this is a joint work between Indiana University and Semantic Research Labs. So the data from the LT analytics shows that there will be more LT devices than non-LT devices in the near future. And with the explosion of the LT market, there's also an increasing number of the vulnerable LT devices. So there are security incidents every day, like the, there's a 55% of rise in LT malware attacks. And also two million LT devices are vulnerable to uh, complete takeover. So with so many uh, vulnerable LT devices, the question is that how could we identify that? Uh, previous research uh, focused on two directions. One direction is uh, static analysis. Basically, the researcher may get the uh, vulnerab vulnerability information from the firmware and then search in other devices' firmware to find out whether the other devices are vulnerable. And also, they can uh, use some static analysis tools on the firmware, like the symbolic execution, to check whether the firmware is, uh, whether the, the device is vulnerable to a specific vulnerability. And another direction is the dynamic analysis. Uh, basically, we can get the physical device or get an emulated device, and then we use some tools like fuzzing testing to check whether, the whether there's a vulnerability in the device. So actually, both the static and the dynamic analysis rely on two preconditions. One is the firmware, the other is the physical device. So for firmware, m most of the vendors actually don't want to make their firmware uh, public. And even they have some kind of packing techniques to prevent the user from unpacking the firmware for analysis. Uh, for the physical device, we may not have enough budget to buy uh, many devices. And also, uh, like many devices may out of stock, so we cannot get that for analysis. So these two conditions make the previous approach uh, not scaling well on, on the problem. So uh, in our study, we want to explore the question about how to identify the vulnerable LT devices in a scalable way. So during our study, we actually have two uh, interesting insights. One is that when the uh, IoT device vendor, especially the small or medium-sized vendor, build their product, they usually don't, want to, uh, don't have the time and don't want to pay the effort to uh, design the product from scratch. Actually, they get some hardware component from some other vendors, or they get some open source projects from, uh, uh, they get some software from open source repositories and then they combine the components and softwares together to build their product. So what's the problem with this de design? So actually, if there is a vulnerability in the hardware component or in the open source projects, the vulnerability may be propagated to several, uh, several LT devices. So the second insight we have is that almost always the LT devices are paired with a mobile companion app and the mobile companion app are always a, are often a good estimation of what, what's the look, what the device look like. So that means if we want to study the similarity, uh, if well, you want to study the similarity between the LT devices, we can get the information by analyzing the similarity of the mobile apps. So with these two insights in mind, how could we design an approach that help to identify the new uh, to identify new vulnerable LT devices. So instead of analyze each uh, physical device directly, we can use, uh, we can use a cross-app analysis to identify whether there are some vulnerabilities which can transfer among different devices. So this approach apparently we only analyze, we only analyze the mobile app, which requires no access to the physical device and also, the, also their firmware. So, uh, therefore, it uh, skills much better than the previous approach. So here is the architecture of our platform. First, we have a crawler to collect a set of mobile companion apps from the Google Play. And the second, we do app analysis to extract the device information from the uh, apps. With the device information, we can do a cross-app analysis, which helps to put two devices in uh, in a device family if they share a same component. Once we get the device family, we can make use of the 
known vulnerability reports and find out some potentially vulnerable devices. So in our study, we work on a uh, app database with over 2,000 LT company apps on Google Play. And these apps uh, covers over 1,300 different device vendors and almost 5,000 device models. So we use this app set for the uh, validation of, uh, to validate our approach and also to find new vulnerable devices. So the goal of the app analysis is to build a device profile by analyzing mobile apps. Basically, we extract three kind of information from the mobile app. One is the device interface, which is the interface used, which is the network interface used between the mobile app and the IoT device. The second information is the device imprints, which could be the unique strings that helps to, that are related with the IoT device. The third is the fuzzy hash of the app code. So which kind of information could we get from the device interface? Actually, there's a lot of information. For example, we can get a protocol that are used by the device. And also we can know the operations of the core features of the device. For example, the smart light may support some like light control features. We also know the software that are running on the device, like the web server that's running on the app cameras. So we may also know the hardware component that the device vendor have involved in their product. So the question is, how could we get the device interface, I mean the pairs of request and response that the IoT device could receive or uh, generate? So by only observing the app. So basically there's uh, three steps. Firstly, could we how could we automatically generate the request without accessing the physical device? Second, how could we know what the device would look, what the response would look, look like? And third, because that's, that, uh, that's a lot of asynchronous request and response, how do, could we do the pairing between the request and the response? So in our study, we leverage a series of techniques. For instance, for the request generation, we try to extract the code that are related with the requ request, and then we do the parcel execution in a customized uh, runtime environment to trigger the request generation. For the response, we rely on the program dependence graph to extract the constraints that, are, that could be used to describe the response. For the pairing, we check how much data or how much context are shared between the request and the response. The second information we get from the app is the device imprints. So these imprints are unique strings in the app that, are, that could help to identify the LT device. So our observation shows that those strings are usually the strings that impact the communication between the app, the app and the IoT device. For instance, if the app and the device want to talk in an encrypted channel, they may share some in a symmetric case. If there is a username and account on the IoT device, the username and account may appear in the mobile app. So we ex extract such kind of information to help to identify the device and do the cross app analysis. So the third thing we get is the fuzzy hash. So which is the code signature we get from, uh, we calculated for the app code. So fuzzy hash is used to figure out whether a same app module is actually adopted by different vendors. And this uh, metric is also useful uh, when other method fields, for example, if we do the uh, if we want to extract the device interface with parcel execution on native library, we may have some troubles. So we, we made use of the fuzzy hash analysis to, uh, to analyze the, like the native libraries, find out whether the two native libraries are similar or not. So for the cross app analysis, because devices are usually not identical, but they only share some small components, so we do a kind of uh, modular-based or packet-based similarity checking and try to cluster the devices in the same family uh, based on the functional components of the app. So here is uh, some examples of the device family. We can see that each of the family actually, uh, the devices in each of the family actually share a similar com a same component, like the software running on the device, the hardware the device has, the protocol the device supports or the backend 
the device connects to. So once we get the device families, we can make use of the known vulnerabilities and try to figure out whether there are some other devices that has a similar vulnerability, a vulnerable module. So for the validation part, we tried every, we tried our best to validate whether the devices are indeed vulnerable. For, for instance, we get the firmware database, and also we have a set of physical devices, and we check the online reports and find out whether the problem has been reported by the other contributors. And also we ask the vendor to validate whether their, their product are vulnerable or not. So to, uh, to validate our approach, we start from some known vulnerabilities or weaknesses. So these uh, vulnerabilities and weaknesses span in different uh, dimensions. For example, we study a vulnerable software that affects the P2P cameras. We also study the hardware modules that may leak the Wi-Fi credentials. We study the protocol that may be used in some kind of reflection-based DDoS attack. And also we analyzed the cloud, the, a weak cloud backend that may be used by the attackers. So after running, uh, after an analyzing these vulnerabilities on our platform, we found over 300 uh, potentially vulnerable devices, and among the devices we can validate, we found that 91% of the devices are actually confirmed to have the vulnerability or weakness. So here is a case about the vulnerable software. So there's a 5CVE talking about the vulnerable web server on the P2P cameras. We see that these CVEs are actually reported like two years ago. So we thought that most of the devices should have been patched, or therefore we expected a less result. However, when we do the, when we do the analysis with the, our platform, we found over 70 devices that are potentially vulnerable, and we are able to validate 55 devices here. So interestingly, uh, we, also found seven, we also found seven different devices, uh, seven devices that are previously unknown to be vulnerable to this uh, uh, weakness. So we contacted the vendor, and the vendors are, like three vendors are working on the patch, and one vendor asked us to uh, have their name on the report. So another interesting case is the device rebranding. Re There's a CVE in 2018 talking about a stack buffer overflow in the Insteon Wi-Fi camera. And in our platform, we actually see another device from the first cam, another device, the first cam epic camera are actually uh, may, be, may be vulnerable to the vulnerability. So after looking deeper into this question, we found that the, first ca the Insteon Wi-Fi camera is actually a rebranding of the first cam epic ca camera. That means first cam get the uh, device from, Insteon get the device from first cam and then they sell the product with their own brand. So the interesting thing is that when we look into the first cam camera, it's not vulnerable. But we checked the, we checked the uh, firmwares like before 2017. There's a seven uh, firmware versions that are vulnerable. After 2017, first cam seems to know the vulnerability and patched that. But actually, this uh, vulnerability about uh, Insteon cam camera is reported like 2018. And we also checked the most recent version of the Insteon Wi-Fi camera. And we found that the vulnerability is still there. So the interesting part is that with the rebranding with, or with the component sharing, the vulnerability could easily uh, get into different devices, but the patch are not. So we also have some other uh, findings, like we found a lot of devices that are using some uh, vulnerable hardware, and also they are uh, talking with some weak protocols or talking to some vulnerable backend. So for more information, please read our paper. So for the takeaways, one thing we want to mention is that IoT devices usually share some comp component. With the sharing of the component, there are some vulnerabilities transferring among different devices. And we also find that device, similar, device similarities are often reflected in their mobile companion apps. 
that means using app analysis, uh, we, always, we can always use app analysis as an effective means to quickly identify vulnerable devices and also decides if a device is vulnerable to a specific vulnerability. Thank you. Thanks, sir. We have time for a few questions. Let me start by asking, uh, one of the things you mentioned is this uh, idea that it's expensive to buy a lot of devices for yeah. finding vulnerabilities on them, but presumably to figure out whether these devices are vulnerable, you still needed to buy, like I assume these 173 or however many devices that you validated vulnerabilities on, you had to get a physical copy of, is that right? Uh, yeah, if you want to get the device, uh, it's, all, it's always costly. But in our approach, we use different validation uh, techniques. Like we checked uh, whether the firmware is available online. Mm, if it, it's I online, see. we can validate it on the firmware. We, we can also ask the vendor whether they have the vulnerability. So there's a different techniques we can use to avoid the uh, cost here. Oh, I see, very interesting, yeah. thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think we have one more question. Hi, yes, Hi. John Krizzle, University of Rochester. So, nice work, but I'm kind of wondering what you would do with this information, right? So, do you have any recommendation to the, to the IoT manufacturers about how to deal with this? Is it really any better in the, in the desktop or server world? I mean, y your initial question was, are these devices vulnerable? And I already know, know the answer to that. Yes. So, what do you do with this information? So. So that's a quite interesting question. So actually, during our validation, we tried to reach out, hundred, reach out to hundreds of device vendors. And the data shows that only one-fifth of the vendors actually rep uh, replied to our request. So that's uh, so how to say, if we want to ask the vendor to patch a problem, we may have some problems. Because there's a lot of uh, smaller vendors, they may not have the enough uh, like budget uh, or effort uh, or the uh, professional to fix their product. Okay, thank you. That's frightening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's thank Xiaoxiang again. Thank you. Thank you.